So we're just going to show the cold open? Well, you do the and then <laughs> <laughs> Your shoulder's gotten Better grip. Soft. I've been <laughs> clapped and slapped for 15 That's months. That's right. It's it healed. You're um, still getting all of this, right? Hey, Conan O'Brien here uh, for another edition of Behind the Nonsense. This is where we explore some of the tomfoolery behind the scenes, how things got made. And uh, we discuss very loosely uh, how it all happened with the people who made it happen. And I'm sitting here with two terrific writers, Jesse Gaskell. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Conan. Jose Arroyo. Hey, Conan. And um, you seemed uncomfortable. I I was saying, hey, Conan. (laughs) Okay. I love to try and make him. Take it again. I know. We're going to stick with that. (laughs) I love that. Hey, Conan. Uh, Anyway, I don't mean to embarrass you, but you're excellent writers and you have come with me on every single travel show. Whenever we go anywhere in the world for Conan Without Borders, this is a core of my writing team along with Mr. Mike Sweeney. We're gonna talk now about the cold open for the Mexico show. Yes. We went to Mexico City and we did a show. And just to set the table, Donald Trump was elected president in 2016. Uh, he said he was gonna build a wall and Mexico would pay for it. it stirred up, I think, a lot of xenophobia. Uh, about Mexico and the border. And so this is 2017, and we decided we should go to Mexico City and do a show and do it with the help of the Mexican people who work in the television industry. So this was the cold open to that show. Why don't we show it and then we'll talk about it and the show in general. Let's take a look. Buenas tardes. Pasaporte. Oh, yeah. There you go. It's O'Brien. Conan O'Brien. I'm him. <laughs> the comedian. TV host. Doing a big show in Mexico <laughs> City. Check it out. Muy bien, nos están mandando sus mejores. Step on the line, sir. Ah, okay. We have a new policy. Americans are subject to extreme vetting. Extreme vetting? You might just be one of those bad hombres. Look, I see what you're doing, all right? We got some new people running the United States, and that's created some tension between our countries. But you can't lump all Americans into one group. It's not fair. Stereotyping. Gracias. Thank you so much. I'll, uh, that's just my easy time. Okay, that's my favorite. That's my favorite. I wasn't sure if you guys would have good Mexican food. I stayed there like 15 years ago, okay? And I stole the towel. <laughs> that is yours to keep, and I'll just see myself through the border. This is a great, great gate. Okay, I don't know if you can see all the way to the end, but um, I don't know if that's the take where the dog actually got me. Is that <laughs> yes. the take? Yes. Well, that's what we were just reminiscing finally about. I was told, I think, to get down before the dog gets me, but I always like to go for it. And um, pretty sure that dog chomped me on the thigh. Yeah. Well, that was a real police dog. I mean, that's a like a Belgian Malinois. Is that the... I don't know. I didn't <laughs> hire the dog. <laughs> I would have assumed you would have gotten a non-lethal dog. <laughs> But you're looking to me for like, that was the lethal dog that we got, right? I don't, that's you who got the dog. They were uh, they were trained and you were supposed to run. The dog was going to chase you and you were supposed to stop at a certain point. But the, I think... Well, when a killing dog is chasing you, <laughs> hard to stop uh, as it nears. But and, and it broke the skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah it did break the skin. Uh, and I remembered walking back and it tore the pants leg. 
Um, and so I saw blood and, and torn yeah. pants leg, and I thought. Uh, and we had other pants, so. Yeah, what did you that care? Was fine. Yeah, for us, that's political, about as political as we get, because we don't often do political humor, but it was such a charged atmosphere. And actually, something we like to do with a lot of the Conan Without Border shows is flip the script so that I'm the American. In this case, like the gringo is the interloper. So the power position has right. been switched. And so I thought it was a really good idea that you guys had that I'm trying to get into Mexico and they're harassing me the way people thought we were harassing uh, Mexicans who were trying to come. And so there was a real nice simplicity to it. But then we go to silly jokes that make fun of me and the joke really is all the way through on me, which which is the kind of stuff I like to do. Exactly, exactly. And you took advantage of that charged atmosphere to, you know, from the politics at the, at the time. So all we had to do was, you know, give the, the same lines that Trump was saying to the Mexican guards. They're not sending us their best you know, right. or things like that. And right. of course it got a great reaction. Yeah, we shot it at Televisa in uh, Ciudad de Mexico, and everyone who worked on it was fantastic. Yes. I mean, they, they helped us. It was important to me that we got to do it with the help of uh, Mexican uh, television makers and executives and camera operators. And yes. so um, that was fun to show that cold open to that audience. They got a huge yeah. kick out of it, again. Yeah. And then they watched me do a monologue all in, in Spanish. In Spanish. Um, and uh, I remembered you backstage, you running, because you're fluent. Yes. You just running it with me over and over and over again so that my 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 accent was better, my pronunciation was a little more fluent because I really wanted to earn the laughs. That's right. In That's right. Uh, in Spanish. And so that ended up working out. Buenas noches, me llamo Conan O'Brien. Si? O, o como me conocen en México? El gringo que llora cuando come sunset que no pica. You did four or five monologue jokes, the same stuff that you do on, you know, in the, um, in the right. U.S. show, and uh, your phonetic pronunciation was great. It came out really good. You know, I also think there's something that's happened, I noticed it with this piece, which is we were really able to take advantage of this when we, when we moved to Los Angeles. We did all those years in New York, and... Um, made all this comedy that I'm, that I'm really proud of. Uh, not all of it, but a lot of it. Um, <laughs> let's be honest, it's a numbers game. Uh, but when we came here to Los Angeles and the locations yes. that we can get are so cinematic. And that was one of the things that I counted on when we came out here. I didn't even know that drones were gonna be a thing, but the drone shots that we can get and so it's that Breaking Bad look, and we have excellent camera technicians and, and cameramen and, and people who know how to make things look amazing. They can always match these looks, and you guys were always meticulous storyboarding things. And so to pull people into the reality of a situation like that, you really do feel like I'm walking across the desert and you're looking at a legitimate piece of filmmaking rather than the cold open to, uh, you know, a, 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 a nightly show. So that, I think, was something that I was proud of. I, I do feel bad about rubbing ham on the back of your pants. <laughs> you but, told me uh, it was your uh, good luck ritual. Yeah, and uh, the uh, dog, You yeah. always have ham, too. Yeah. <laughs> Jose really does have little leather pouches. He'll wait until we're sitting in traffic on a bus or something, and then he'll- On a travel show. Very obviously pull one out of yes. his backpack because he, it's almost because like the it red flag in front of the Conan bowl. <laughs> to see these tiny little things that I sometimes he has, have. He has a very Eurocentric sensibility. <laughs> And he has lots of little tiny pouches and leather cases, and he has fine little pens and pencils, and he has little sketching pads, and you've never seen anything like them before unless you were raised in Holland. <laughs> and he'll pull out this little pouch, and he'll open it up, and there's one little nectarine wedge that he keeps in there. And then he'll go like, mmm, mm, and then like, mmm. Just up, enough. Just enough, not too much, just enough. And then he'll zip it up again, and uh, I always wanted to throw you out the bus window. Yes, exactly. And I think several times I did. <laughs> Have this sold on eBay, please. Absolutely. That's my saliva. Hello? Oh, Spielberg. Excuse me. 